Welcome to the Starting Over Podcast. I am your host, Edward Shelton, a.k.a. Dark Logos, and this is the show where we talk about the strategies, tactics, and mechanics behind the game of Heroclix. Okay, uh, today's show is going to be interesting. I'm going to go do a little bit of what's in your head and uh, then go in to talk about the newest resources uh, and how they affect the meta right now. Now, note, uh, I will say this. Some of the things with the resources are not quite clear. Uh, and so if I'm wrong, people, just let me know. Put it in the comments below. Um, if there's some like WizKids ruling later on, just just let me know. Because I am I watch WizKids event system, but man, the way that they're acting lately, it's like, hey, uh, if you have a question, you better use forum foo. Um, because if not, uh, your thing isn't going to be posted. And it's like... Uh, Am I really going to go and dig through, you know, 50, 60 pages of question links just to find some some rulings? But anyway, here we go. Let's let's get started. I am building for uh, the rock uh, for Tulsa Rock, and I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know what I'm going to be playing yet. And this is bad. And this is good for a couple of reasons. It's bad. Because it gives me less time to play test and get my head into the characters and figures. It's good because it still means that what I'm seeing indicates that there's no set team. The meta is still in flux. And that there is some new tech out, possibly, that could change You know how things are, are going to be played. Uh, I really want you all to to understand yes i am fully gung-ho about preparation and getting your stuff ready um but don't let that don't let you misunderstand me um by by having that that feeling uh understanding that as well you can sort of you know keep pushing and pushing and pushing if the idea that you have isn't really fully formed yet if it's not really that good yet uh i know many times uh, people will be like, well, I have this team and I just need to practice it now. And really, it's not the best team that you can make. It's you're, you're more concerned about practicing and getting good with it. And that does add, you know, to your success barrier. Uh, and sorry, it takes away from your success barrier. It, it allows you to get to success a lot quicker um, just by having that practice. At the same time, putting in that effort to keep digging and saying, you can do better than this, you can do better than this, you can do better than this, and and taking the proverbial noodle and seeing if it sticks against the wall to see if it's done uh, is important as well. Because you start coming into uh, mindsets and ideas that, A, you weren't looking at before, and B, you start to realize like, oh, if people do do that, I can I can do this other thing or if people do this, that means they can't do this other thing. So I just need to play like this. And so uh, for me, uh, I'm not going to reveal what I've been playing, but I looked at Super Scroll Tech and I, I was like, oh, I've I've helped make some great Super Scroll Tech. It's gr it's awesome. And I'm like, man, but. You know, I, what about, you know, these these upcoming swarm teams that I'm seeing? They're like, well, what about Super Scroll with Ghetto Swarm? And then I started moving over to, you know, KC Flash. Can I borrow him? What is this worth it? Then it's like, hey, guess what? High Hopes uh, out there uh, has, you know, uh, Turtle. So if you go against that, you're like auto screwed just because of the cost of KC Flash. And it's like, oh, man, you know, that's right. But then I start thinking about copycat tech and copycat tech jacks with a lot of the swarm tech. And it also jacks with the uh, high hopes tech because you just take hope and it's like, ah, <laughs> what are you going to do? So. There's there's a lot of things that just went through my mind and I'm like, oh, what? What? Come on. Something. No, nothing. And. I still have some play testing to do this evening um, to like solidify like what I've been thinking about and seeing if this actually does work. If it legitimately works, if it's something that I need to continue pursuing or if it's just something that I need to let go and just go with a team that's already pre-established in the meta. So uh, definitely with. I'll, I'll say this just for no tactics. This is sort of interesting. I had a friend of mine pointed out. 
uh, you could actually do Hal and Sinestro duo really well and then have them break into like any number of cheapo Hal's and then bring out 200 points Sinestro. <laughs> and then when 200 points Sinestro is beaten up to all get out, just have cheapo Hal merge them together and uh, you have a full um, you have a full power Sinestro Hal duo. So, all right. Uh, let's let's get into today's show. We're going uh, a little bit deeper, and we're going to go talk about that lovely, lovely Rock of Eternity and Pandora's box, and how they are going to uh, impact the meta. All right, let's let's start with Rock of Eternity, uh, just for the pure fact it is the most confusing, convoluted dials that that are out there, and it's most likely going to take the most amount of time to understand uh so pull up your hero clicks preview your whiz kids preview or hc realms or whatever little thing that you're reading um and uh, we'll go from there all right so here's here's the first thing you have your force construction rocket attorney is 14 points and at least uh one and up to seven distinct sins may be included on your force and cost two to four points each. Now, I mean, sorry, cost two points each. Now, now that right there is the beginning of this is stupid. This is stupid. Because in the end, you're spending 28 points to get all the sins and the resource. So, yes, it's like, oh, but it buffs this one guy. I mean, the Infinity Gauntlet was more expensive than this. Okay. So, yeah, there's there's some points of concern here. Okay. Next, assign. When building your force, the Rock of Eternity is assigned to a character on your force. Yay. With a point value of 50 points or more. Yay. Okay. The assigned character is called your champion. Your champion can use standard power indicated by the Shazam dial. Okay. When it is assigned the same number of tokens indicated to the next slot okay so pretty much you have zero one and two so if you have zero tokens you can use the first power if you have one tokens you can use the second row uh if you have thir- two tokens you can use the third row which in all honesty is sort of dumb uh because it doesn't really allow for any high levels of stability okay you're you just have to like Woo, I, I i i need poison when I have no action tokens right now, but I have to get two action tokens on me so I can use poison. I could really use stealth to get into position right now, but I can't get that because, you know, I don't have two action tokens. Like, oh, I really use perplex right now, but I only, I have two action tokens. I only get enhancement. So I will say this, they they did try to pair up powers that you can use just by sitting there on when you have two tokens so that is a positive okay so let's see okay uh share number of tokens indicated by the slot when the special power or attached sin is showing on the shazam or sin dial your champion may use its effects so what i'm assuming is that each sin has a specific color and that is where we see on the send dial. So they try to encourage you to get all the sins. They really do. Uh, now, looking at the sins, like I'm on cool stuff. Uh, looking at the sins, they each the each little resource has a distinct color, um, and so that makes it a little bit more sense on the sin dial. Now, at first I was like, so do I just get the power that's that color? Because they don't, they don't really make it clear. Um, you're supposed to put two and two together that uh, matching the sins color is the sin that you get. All right. Now the pros and cons thus far, the pros, if you don't want to use all the sins, you don't have to, you, you really don't have to. 
Uh, but the way that they have this set up, it is highly, highly leaning towards sloth. Because sloth is like light blue. And you're bound to get sloth near the beginning and then sloth near the end. Okay, so if your opponent does three actions, one, two, three, boom, you're going to land on sloth. Okay, so right there, you are you just have to, in a standard 300-point game, you just have to sit still. In a higher-point game, what I would want you to look at is every number of actions that's doable in a turn or for your game. So, like, if you if you have, like, a 600-point game, five actions or something like that. That's the slot. That's the sin that you want to make sure that you're able just to attach there with the quickness. So, you know, like, okay, I'm going to get, you know, they're going to do five actions. I need to make sure that I have access to that sin. Uh, So let's see. Purple sin. Purple sin is pride. So I want to make sure I have pride on the dial. Okay. so that's that's the first thing that you're really looking at when you start looking at your sin dial and your overall. It's just making sure that you're lining stuff up with the amount of actions that are possible. Okay, next, when we're looking at the Shazam dial, really you just need to say, when I have zero or one tokens, this is, please hear me when I say this, when I have zero or one action tokens, can I base what I'm about to do on any of this? So starting off, can you benefit from energy explosion? If yes, check the box. If no, yeah okay then it's like can you benefit from smoke cloud if you have one token and do you have indomitable check the box yes check the box no okay if not then keep that in mind now if you know like earlier on you're like i'm gonna get tk'd over here pick up the you know relic number one get tk'd over there and friendly mind control to pick up relic number two Okay, that's cool. So now you're on two relics. You've taken, you know, no actions. Um, no no power actions. So you have two relics. Okay, so now you're looking at Force Blast and Mind Control or whatever else. So, And then, again, I am looking at the Red Path, which is the... What is this? Is that the Mighty Path? No, Red is the Cunning Path. So... Let's let's cut let's compare a cunning path versus the the mighty path. Okay. The mighty path in all honesty is meh, okay? Um for for a couple of reasons. And I know you're gonna be like, but Jerry Glogos, we put it on this and the other thing, and I know in the future it's it's going to come out. Um and there's gonna be some guy that's super broken and whatnot, and yeah, so so, okay, so we'll, we'll look at the Mighty Path and then we'll look at the Cunning Path. We start off on the Mighty Path with TK. That's that's not that mighty, okay? Then uh, we get Quake and then Poison. Well, okay, I don't have any problem with the Poison, but again, I have two action tokens. Okay, then you go on to Flurry. Now, this is great. This is great, but it's only good if you have no action tokens. So you have your no action tokens and you go, boom, I got charge and flurry, boom, but you have to have charge. All right. So keep in mind what I said like earlier on, like, boom, I get TK to this one place, pick up my first item for free, you know, TK to my second place and then friendly mind controlled. And then on the first turn or the first action, like, boom, I've gotten two sins. Okay. So now I can get flurry and I don't, I haven't taken any actions with my hero to get, or my champion to get the tokens. Okay, so then we go from Flurry into Hypersonic Speed. Now, I, you might be saying, with Dark Logos, how can you hate on Hypersonic Speed? I am not. This is actually awesome. My concern is, is after you get your second token, because you're going to use your Hypersonic Speed, uh, you're on, like, Plasticity. Which, depending on how the meta goes, it could or could not be great. Because with all this improved movement ignores characters... Plasticity does nothing to them. Nothing. They just ignore it. So it, it's a problem. Okay, so then you go on to your third sin. You get your third sin. 
Now you have Close Combat Expert. This means that your character, if you're going to be using it with no tokens, is based to somebody. Then if you have one token, you have Outwit. So this is, this is sort of nice. This is sort of nice. I have Outwit now. I have the ability, if I so choose, to just maintain this, this current place that I'm at. Okay, now you go over, down. sorry, you go down, and then you get in power. Again, you have to have a team design for you to be like up in their face. Really up in their face. Like, oh, got it. Come on. So, again, problems. Lots of problems. All right. If, if you're not designed for this up in the face meta. Yeah, sorry. If you're not designed to create an up in the face meta, you're going to have a problem. Then, you, again, you go over to four, slot four. You have charge. And then you have uh, blades. And you have combat reflexes. Now, you're able to roll to get to see if you get on, like, the magical one power or whatever on your Shazam dial. And then you're able to take a double power action. If you get it to take a double power action to turn into Shazam. And then that's awesome. But this is the other issue. If your, your whole design is based off of, you know, making sure that you have slot one or whatever, or, or even let's just say uh, slot three, just anything, everything in slot three, you need everything in slot three. Then, you know, you have to ask your question, is getting the one with the Shazam, uh, turning into Shazam worth it? And this is where the sort of the conflict of design comes in. Because when you had the Infinity Gauntlet, you're able to just keep everything. Uh, and it's like, oh, pff, Godhood, I have all the stuff. But you don't really get that. Um, you don't really get that. Now, I will say is this. If you get seven sins, if you get seven sins, you have access to Flurry, uh, Impervious, and Prob. And Impervious, I, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, that's nice. And even on six, getting Super Senses, I like that a lot. But when you're looking at most characters... What if you're you're making them them your champion? What do they already have? They already have impervious or invincible or super senses, so you're sort of doubling up, and you're thinking that you know Whiskers is thinking by that stage you're beat up. You probably need that stuff again, which is which is partially true, but having it up front would make it would open it up a lot more to various types of of champions. To really say like, boom, I got magical powers and resistances and stuff. Okay, so let's let's look at the cunning path, and we'll see that the cunning path actually for hero clicks is a little bit more useful. And here's why. Okay, the cunning path really leans you toward a range meta, which we are in. Okay, so you have energy explosion, boom, smoke cloud, boom, poison. Boom. Okay, great. Energy explosion, you can plan around that. Like, out out the gate, if you have a zombie and you're just like, hmm, you know, they have a, I have a decent range and multiple targets, time to hit them with that energy explosion, son. Off the bait, off the, off the blah, off the blah, blah, blah. Anyway, <laughs> then you're going on the smoke cloud, which variable teams right now have benefits for. You know, definitely if you're looking at a situation where you're trying to hide your whole entire team in stealth and you can just keep tempo. You're not taking an action every turn, but you're taking action every other turn and you like it like that. And you're just like smoke cloud. My team is protected. OK, I will. You know, my smoke clouds out now I'm clear. OK, next turn. Boom. You know, drop, drop my smoke cloud again. Um, so it's just something to think about. Definitely if you're running alternating smoke cloud. Uh, force blast, running shot, psychic blast with force blast, running shot pulse wave with force blast. Oh gosh, force blast. As long as you're able to combine it with running shot, it is so great. So great. Mind control can be combined with running shot or a charge, uh, which is your second slot power. And then stealth, which is meh. Eh, I'm, I'm not feeling that, but okay. Next up, range combat expert. Again, you're just saying, I am a range guy. This is this is range the entire time. Then you have perplex. This is I like, I like this. I like this a lot. 
Then I have enhancements, which again implies that you're running a range-based team. Then you're like, oh, I'm beat up. I get running shot, then psychic blast. I wish, why? <sighs> then energy shield, which you're like, ah, ah, ah. Can I get it together, please? Like all of it together. Then you get smoke cloud again, which is sort of dumb because you're doubling up on the same power. Then it's a little unclear on 8C Realms what this is. I'm assuming that it's movement, so it's phasing. That I don't get. That that I don't get at all. Uh, and then outwit. Now outwit is useful, but you're stuck. Now, now here we go. This is this is the positive. No action tokens you've cleared on six or number six. Pulse wave. All right, pulse wave. Then barrier. Then enhancement. So I mean, uh, I, I'm not feeling that. Why are we doubling up on this enhancement? Now, I know we doubled up on prob before, but I'd rather double up on prob. I I really feel like you should be keep having access to prob. Then on your last click, you get stealth once again. And then impervious and then shape change. Now, I really would have liked it better if you were able to just go ahead and say like, all right, I'm going to have impervious on click two, on if I have two tokens, but and shape change if I have one. But, eh, okay, whatever. Now, you can also, when, you, when you're looking at all of this, it, you have to ask yourself the question, what the heck am I designing that can use all of these crazy, silly things together? And you're not using it in combination with another resource. Okay, so this is the first part that gives me concern about about the rock of eternity just starting off and i know i haven't even read through the whole card yet but this is the part that's that we're already like okay because when when we when all said and done if we do put all seven sins on there our main goal is to get one if we build around any of these powers right here they're so inconsistent that it's sort of like rolling the dice to see, did, did I get something useful? Can I, can I not be screwed by my own resource dial? Okay. Then when you go down to your sin dial, your opponent can dictate so much of your sin dial. It's not funny. All right. So let's, let's sort of go through, um, let's go to the next step and here we go. Set up at the beginning of the game, choose cunning path, blah, 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 path, mighty path. All right. Instead of placing objects, place up to three sins on the map. Each sin must be in at least five squares away from the, uh, from each other, uh, any starting area and each in its own row and column, which technically means you can you can put them on a diagonal. And so one's five, the other six, the other seven. If you put them on a direct diagonal with each other, they're not in either each rows or column. Oh, so never mind. They couldn't be on a direct diagonal. They still have to be five squares from each other. So you're you're looking at them being really spread out, but you're still able to place them in a in a way in which you could get TK to one, pick up the first object, and then get TK to the second, because the second would be six away. And then get friendly mind control and pick up the second one. And then the third one, you just get TK'd over to the third one. And then, boom, you pick it up. Or you just walk over there if you want to. It's real It's real easy in, in one turn to pick them up. If they rule that you can, you know, just pick them up however, then, yeah, you just need two TK. So you TK him over. He picks it up. TK him to the second one. He picks it up. He walks over to the third one, picks it up. Boom. You're done. Three actions. Okay. So that's, that's not hard. So if, if you really, like I said, if you really want to base your team around like, Hey, uh, 
power three, power three, sorry, slot three, power two, which is one token, which gives you perplex, which is sort of weak because you're spending way too many points just to get a perplex. And then hopefully you have to clear the double roll to see if you can do a double power action, which then again, that's dumb because again, you're stuck to see if you can turn into broke Shazam. Okay, so, um, blah, 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 blah. Okay, remaining sins are added to your sideline. So you don't have to pay for more sins. Really, if you want to, you could just pay for two sins and then have them on there. I really don't recommend that because you're not turning into Shazam. So, just saying. Okay, the sin dial begins the game on click one, which is your second dial. And can't turn, uh, it, sorry, the sin dial can't turn to a click lower than click number one or higher than click tw number 20. So, that's a positive. So, you can't, like, go backward and be like, ha ha, I fell on click 20. Ha ha ha. Boom. I'm, I'm broke strong. So, yeah. Imprisoning sins at the beginning of your turn. If your champion doesn't have two action tokens, you may attach a sin from your sideline to this resource. Okay, so that's nice. So, yeah, if your champion doesn't have two action tokens. So, you have an incentive to just do one thing, clear, do one thing, and clear. Okay, uh, you may attach sin from your sidelines uh, to this resource. Uh, give this champion, give the champion a free action. Uh, when it occupies a square with a sin placed by you and attach it to this resource each time you attach a sin, turn the Shazam dial to the click number equal to the number of sins attached. So here's what you can do. At the beginning of the game, you're just like, uh, beginning of the, the game, it's like, boop, I attach this sin from off the map and I have it now. There you go. I've I've got it. TK me over to the first one sin. Boom, pick it up. So technically, yeah, you could get four sins like really quickly. Yeah, you could get four sins really quickly. So you could go into that running shot or psychic blast or stealth and hypersonic speed. No, not stealth. I mean a charge and blaze claws fangs. So, again, as long as you only have, uh, you don't have two action tokens. That's the main thing. Um, so, you, with that in your mind, you can also say to yourself, if I'm playing this resource, I can decide to stall. I got Turtle on my team. I got TK on my team. I got the biggest, baddest backup hitter on my team. And we got some barrier and we're just going to stall it out until I can get this champion powered up. And when I do, it's, you know, watch out. All right, next up, unlock the power of Shazam. At the beginning of your turn, when your champion, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, unlock the power of Shazam. At the beginning of your turn, when your champion has no action tokens, you may roll two D6 uh, that can't be re-rolled and add the current click number. Uh, from the Shazam dial. Okay, so you roll 2d6. So the most you can roll with 2d6, you know, just up front is 12 if you crit hit. Um, so you need to hit a 16. So you at least need to be on the Shazam dial on click four. Okay, so right there, they're telling you, you need to run four or more of, of the, the sins. If the result is 16 or more, give your champion a double power action. Attach any attached sins to this resource and turn and turn the Shazam dial to click nine. OK, so here's the thing. You, if you roll a 12. And you have four attached and you have three on the sidelines, then, yeah, but if you have all seven attached you still need to roll an 11. Oh, no, no, sorry. If you, <laughs> sorry, my bad, that's wrong math. My, my brain reset for a moment. If you have all seven attached, you still have to roll a nine. Okay, that's not bad, but you're looking at nine, 10, 11, 12. That's a one in four chance. It's a one in four chance of you turning into Shazam. That's 
that's not great. And it's a double power action. So after you do it, your guy is, is stuck. And then, okay, so Shazam, your champion uses impervious. If you already have it, then that sucks. Probability control, again, if you already have it, that sucks. Pulse wave, if you already have it, that sucks. Running shot. And the Mystic's team ability which has its own liabilities right now, has the wing symbol indomitable. Your champion has a range value of eight uh, of its printed value or less. If, sorry, eight if your printed value is less. Sorry, if your printed value is less. Okay. So, yeah, you get some stat upgrades. You're indomitable. Boom. You won't take pushing damage because, of course, you have indomitable now from your double power action unless they rule it otherwise that the double power action I don't know. Takes place and then you get it. I, you know, they'll have to ask the rules arbs on that. Okay, so you you got all your sins up, and you have your Shazam power. If you hit it, this is either a really late game, or again you've stalled. Either way, it's not fun for you, and it's not fun fun for your opponent because you all are just dancing the entire time, trying to see if you can get this together now here's here let's let's count down that stall again so we've already determined possibly on turn one i'm able to get my free sin attached tk'd over pick up another sin and then let's just say i walk over and pick up the third sin okay and then and if we really have a team for it i'm friendly mind controlled and then i can pick up that you know the the fourth sin Okay, so bam, I have four sins right there. I And this is turn one. So turn two, I have five. Turn three, I have six. Turn four, I have seven. Can your team run around and stall till turn four? And hopefully you don't have any tokens so that you can turn into Shazam. That's that's what you're looking at. You're hoping to turn into Shazam. And you're starting to roll for Shazam every time from from every turn from turn 4 on. I mean from 4 uh sins on, which could be as soon as turn 3 because again we took a power action to move Shazam over and to pick up an object. I mean pick up a sin. So from turn 3 on we can start saying boom, 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 Shazam. There's so many teams that are in your face by that time. If you face a double Shatterstar team or a Shatterstar team with Avalanche and the double friendly mind control, you are so in trouble. Like your backup crew is dead. So that that's a problem. All right. So next you have giving in to sin. Oh, wait, wait. Count up your sins. Each time one or more action tokens are placed on an opposing character, you may turn the sin dial once clockwise. Each time one or uh, more opposing tokens are placed, uh, sorry, each time one or more action tokens are placed on your champion, turn the sin dial once counterclockwise. So technically, you just consistently gain two. We'll just say you consistently gain two unless you just sit there. All right. And in that case, if your opponent's using all their actions, you're you're just gaining three each time. So let's let's just try to do the math real quick. Let's just say automatically for us to get all three of our sins, that's going to be three actions. And then we spread that out between four turns. OK, and then uh, the rest of the time we just sit rest of the time we just sit so turn one our opponent does three actions so let's just say we go first so this gives this is the number one benefit if you have this asset dial going you want to go first so that your first action that you do does not count against your sin dial so then your opponent does three actions now you're able to use green okay then let's just say you chill your opponent does three more actions now you're on six you're able to use orange and you get access to two. So you're already on two. 
which is giving it to Sin, your champion, give your champion a free action and turn the Sin dial three clicks counterclockwise. When you do, choose one, attach Sin, and your champion can use its effect until your next turn, even if this power is lost. So, okay, that's really not worth it, unless you really, really need one of those side powers, okay, that's attached, okay. All right, so then let's just say again, you're collecting sins. All right, so this is turn three. You're not doing anything. Let's just say this. Turn three, you're not doing anything. We're on nine. Okay, your opponent takes three actions. We're on nine. We're still collecting sins. I I mean, yeah, we're still collecting sins, and we're still able to use sins that are attached that we're not currently showing. All right. So we're pretty we're three turns into this game. My opponent is shooting me. I am I am getting hit. And they have a big incentive to wipe out my champion since he's just sort of sitting there powering up. And if and if there's no incentive for my champion to fight, it's sort of saying my champion is incompetent. <laughs> Here's hoping <laughs> that they stumble onto something awesome. Okay, so we're on nine. So we're on click four. You're on 12. Now I have access to two sins. Okay, and I'll get into power combos later. Okay. Again, I've done nothing. Okay. Turn five. I'm on 15. I've done nothing. Still two sins. Okay. Turn six, 18. I've done nothing. I get access to two, three, and, and sloth. Okay, so three gives us growing temptation. Your champion may immediately choose one attached sin and use his effects until the dial is clicked again. That is dumb. So you're just saying I can use sloth plus two other sins because I have giving in to sin. That's dumb. Okay, and then I go into two and, 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 and I go one more one more turn without doing anything. Then I'm on 20, and then I have five. Boom. Your champion uses all the effects of all sins until the sin dial is clicked again. Okay, here we go. I have no stat bumps at all from this resource in a meta that's full of stat bumps. Okay. And you're talking that pretty much the most that I can do um is that I can use all the sins powers and we'll just go through real quick and I'll show you how, why this is real bad. Okay. So envy, this character use energy shield deflection and sidestep. Okay. So I'll have access to that. When making an attack, you may replace this character's attack value with one of its targets attack values. Envy by far is worth it. And it's probably one of the first ones that you should attach and use like frequently. Then sloth, this character can use sidestep and modifies his defense values by plus one. At the end of your turn, if this character wasn't given any actions this turn, heal it of one. So, yeah, I can get beat up very slowly um, and, and recover if I just sit there and do nothing. Oh, as long as I have access to sloth, that is. Pride. This character can use energy shield deflection and sidestep. This character attack rolls of 11 are also critical hits. Those are That's not really that good. Greed. This character can use energy shield deflection and sidestep. This character, uh, this character can use perplex with a range value of 10, but only a target opposing character is assigned a relic or resource. Again, very conditional. Lust, this character can use combat reflexes, plasticity, and sidestep. Very conditional. I mean, if you need these powers, there are other resources in, in, that can give you these powers, um, definitely in the lanterns. So th this is the problem. Wrath, this character... Uh, can use combat reflexes, sidestep, and willpower. Opposing characters can't use shape change. No. Gluttony. This character can use combat reflexes and sidestep. Give this character a free action and destroy an adjacent wall or a square of blocking terrain. So overall, I really can't see why someone's using the Rock of Eternity in this meta. I really can't. Book is better. Book of the Skulls is so much better um, if you're looking at arming up, you know, a single individual than this is. OK, because at least the book promotes an aggressive play style. This really promotes you sitting there and, and you can already just listen by me saying 
for us to for you to just say your first turn is the only time that you've taken an action for your sin dial just to sort of crank up in a 300 point game for your opponent to just constantly do enough for you to get you know all your different sins going you're stuck and the best that you really can hope for is uh, I can use my opponent's attack value against them and I have combat reflexes and energy shield deflection. That is sort of weak. So so overall, this is this is bad and not good at all. At all. And, and we want to sort of just like step away from this resource. Again, if it gave us plus stats, that would be great. But by the time we get to running shot pulse wave, and we start doing that. It's, it's, I, I understand their main goal is, is to sort of say to you, hey, guy, to compensate for the fact that you are playing passive and half your force has been wiped out. We are going to make it so that you roll the Shazam roll and then, bam, you, you're good to go and start fighting and ignore all of your opponent's you know, stealth and stat mods with Pulse Wave. That's great until you fight Silver Centurion or any other character that comes out in the meta that is not affected by Pulse Wave. What then? Now they have plus stats and you're screwed. Okay, so let's go look at Pandora's box now. All right, Pandora's box. Force construction. Pandora's box costs 12 points. At least one and up to seven distinct sins may attach, uh, be attached to this resource and cost four points each. Now, Rock of Eternity, two points each. Pandora's Box, four points. Very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Okay, setup. At the beginning of the game, choose Red Path of the Hunter, Path of the Hunter, Blue Path of the Ravager, Green Path of the Manipulator. Turn this dial to the starting line of the chosen color and only use click numbers of that color this game. Okay. Sinners. When a friendly character has a sin on its card, it's called a sinner and is assigned Pandora's box. Once per turn, you may give a character a power action and assign it a sin from this resource. So here's the great part is that this resource exists. No one has access to the resource until it assigns a sin to you. Okay. When you do turn this dial, uh, uh, to uh, the click number equal to the number of these sins uh, on all center cards. A center may not have more than one sin on his card from this resource unless there are three or more friendly centers on the map, which means if you're going to be playing this in high level competitive play, you're looking at like 400 points or higher. The main reason is, is that right now, if you're trying to get three sins constantly out, you have to have some very stout characters. And I don't see that happening with Swarm. Now, I mean, you can risk it and 300 points like that. Um, and, you know, Blind Owl, Blind Owl has a sin or something. I don't know. But you really, really want to think twice about this, doing it in 300, just for that pure fact, so that you're, you're trying to get more sins out. That's the main thing. It also makes you say, like, hey, if I don't need a bunch of sends out i just need you know three or four or let's just say i just need two then yeah you you can start playing some different shenanigans okay next up scoring if a center is ko'd any sins on its card are removed from the game and scored as four points each if there are no centers on your force and no sins attached the resource pandero's box is removed from the game and scored at 12 points the vagaries, vagaries, the vagaries, vagaries of sin, vagaries. Once during your turn, you may roll a d6 that can't be re-rolled. If you do, sinners can use the power shown in the corresponding slot until your next turn. Now, this is nice. Your entire force gets a, a buff. So, let's look at your pass real quick since this is the time to talk about it. Okay, so our red path... The Path of the Hunter gives us, you know, phasing, which is meh, okay, or energy explosion. That's pretty good. 
So 50-50 chance, starting off with one cent attach. Then you click it, boom. Running shot or probability control. That's really good. I like that. This is going way better than the Rock of Eternity. Okay, click it. All right, force blast enhancement. Eh, you can start to see this is really treated toward a running shot character. Okay, click it. One more. Stealth. Shape change. Awesome. You, you see, WizKids? This, you can actually make something productive. Okay, five. Psychic blast range combat expert. Both good. Six. Smoke cloud or pulse wave. Eh. Seven. Hypersonic speed on a one through three. Or toughness. Now, that's sort of... Rah, 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 meh, right there with toughness. But uh, I don't know what was going through their brain on that one. Okay. Then, if we go over to the Path of the Manipulator, what do we get? No, sorry. Path of the Ravenger. We get Super Strength and Quake, which that that right there is really great because it says hey i have hypersonic speed i have decent attack i have a decent damage um i need one more thing to sort of put me over to to cap out my damage or to really boost up my damage there it is i have you know uh super strength or you could just say hey i got quake all right cool i could charge quake uh for some added level of control not bad then charge and perplex great this is great flurry if i already have charge i have flurry now so now i have charge flurry close combat expert no that's in power so i'm not too gung-ho on that stealth appearing at the same time okay great stealth uh with some poison or is that plasticity sorry nope that's plasticity sorry people plasticity or poison and eh, not too gung-ho about that could help you deal with some hypersonic speeders okay then uh we go to steel energy this is a good poor uh uh promising power and close combat expert okay sort of okay uh blaze claws fangs at six and exploit weakness so that's good and then we get to hypersonic speed combat reflexes this is dumb combat reflexes is dumb because we have a, we're getting assigned combat reflexes through a couple of the re, uh, re, uh, relics so by this time everybody already has combat reflexes just about so, eh, not, not feeling it as much. Okay, so the last path is the path of the manipulator. Okay, so this really is, say, the path of the, of the guy that needs support on his team. So, perplex, I mean, not perplex, sorry, TK leadership. Uh, then we have mind control willpower. This is, this is good. Smoke cloud barrier. That's a good pairing. Uh, mastermind or support. Ugh. Ugh. mastermind i'm not feeling that too much but i can see how it would be useful if you're just like i need you to die so that the tent pole might live <sighs> then in cap prob not bad super senses perplex awesome region outwit awesome bam that's that is that is the best one for for about 45 to 50 percent of teams the fact that you can recover or evade and that you don't get these powers on your your little guys, on your little sins, is great. Okay? You do get a perplex with one of them, but, I mean, it's a perplex to take stuff away, not to buff you. So, automatically right there. And um, it, this is great. And again, like I said, when you're rolling this, like all your sinners get it. Which could be useful because all your centers could charge or all your centers have blades or whatever else. The problem again comes in is this. With the sins that have been assigned, you've already gotten these abilities and they're pretty much like dead on um, with the other abilities. Yeah, they're exactly the same. They're exactly the same as they are for Rock of Eternity and wrath let me let me check something real quick combat reflex shape change. no it's not that um envy and envy yeah they're exact same thing they are exact same thing okay so going back going back and i know i'm going a little long so uh going back 
do, 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 sinners when friendly characters has a sin on its card it's called a sinner all sign uh, pandora's boss once per turn you may give a character a power action assign it a sin from the resource placing it oh okay here we go once per turn so it takes seven turns to get fully powered up so you better be stout you may give a character a power action so they have to do a power action to summon it so that sort of sucks and assign it a sin from this resource by placing it onto the character's card. Um, when you do this, uh, this uh, sorry, when you do turn this dial to the click number equal to the number of the sins of these sins on all sinners' cards, a sinner may not have more than one sin. Blah blah blah. Within three, okay, yeah, unless there are three or more friendly sinners on the map. Now, here's the other cool thing. I just thought about this. If you have three sins out you can assign the remaining four to one figure so that's cool um bum, 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 bum. emptying the box during your turn if all seven sins were assigned this game all sinners have at least one action token and there are at least three sinners on the map you may turn the dial to click nine do not click it again this game and click nine it gives you one and two third eye possess sinners modify their combat values by plus one which the freaking rock of eternity doesn't do sinners can use improved movement ignores elevated ignores hindering ignores blocking terrain and destroys blocking terrain as the character moves through it, improved targeting ignores elevated terrain ignores hindering terrain ignores blocking terrain um, when range combat resolves and blocking terrain um, along this line of fire to target or destroy and modifies speed value by plus two. Okay. So you have cap speed value. Okay. Gateway to Earth three. Sinners modify their combat values by plus one. You get one and two on click nine. They didn't even pay attention to what they were doing. So you pretty much. <laughs> They didn't pay attention to their own math. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Sorry. Sinners modify their combat values by plus one. Sinners can use the Mystic's team ability once per game. Choose another DC team ability. And Sinners can use that team ability uh, when they can use this power. So here we go. Um, if I really need to push my aggression, I can pick Power Cosmic. Uh, I can pick uh, the League of Assassins. I can pick any number of stupid TAs that I want to, and I have Mystics. Because it didn't even say it has to be copied, but it's not copying. You just pick a team ability. So, yay, I have Quint, homie, and I have plus two attack, plus five movement, I mean, plus four movement, because, just because WizKids can't do math, okay, I have plus uh, you know movement and range okay so yay so no matter what i'm gonna have three range even if i have zero okay i'm able to pick a team ability plus i have mystics and i have the powers that were assigned to me so if someone was to tell me hey edward which of these resources should i get the rock of eternity or uh pandora's box i would tell you play pandora's box hands down if you're forced between the two Pandora's box. Now, Pandora's box is a slow burn. And you're hoping to stay alive. And you have a very distinct, like, I hate to say a Shazam mechanic, because let's say in 300 points, what you're saying is you do not want more than three characters out so that that, that have sins so that you are able to make sure that they all have at least one action token and then you can Shazam. Okay. So a slower grind again, does this beat the book? No book is still better than this. Does this compare to the lanterns? No, the, the lanterns really do give you a lot more control than this. Um, and, and a lot more, overall offense all of them all of the lanterns do okay uh let's see if if i was to say like power rankings like how this relic 
uh, this resource stacks up against other resources, I would say they're right above the uh, bat cave and penguin resources. And slightly above the, the bat belt, but that's about it. That's it. I mean, they're really not that awesome. They're great. They're fun to have. Could they be meta? Yes. If you know you can keep, like for a Pandora's box, you need to know that you can keep your team alive for seven turns. You need to know that. Okay. Uh, or whoever you're attaching your sins to, you need to know that you can keep them alive for seven turns. If you can't keep them alive for seven turns, then yes, you have a problem. Okay, if you have Rock of Eternity, again, you need to know that you can keep your champion, you know, without actions uh, for at least three to four turns before he's really revving to get going. This is a meta I don't like. This is a meta I don't like. Because if we're going to look at what's what's coming on further, if the Avengers resource is anything like this. We're looking for more like if you you have a meeting with your Avengers, then you assign ID cards to all your guys. Now, your ID card gives you certain powers and then you're you're able to do Avengers assembled. And once per game, you're able to summon Captain America, Black Panther, Iron Man or Thor in any square. And they're able to do a, a attack for free. Just any Thor, Iron Man, or Black Panther. Doesn't matter. And then, World War Hulk, you get to summon the Hulk for two turns on click five. Which he has 13 attack, 5 damage, 18 movement with charge, and a 20 defense. <laughs> like... <laughs> It's it's sort of like I can see the I can see the resource for Avengers. It's like in the end we summon Cthulhu. <laughs> we summon Cthulhu. I I use Doctor Strange's car to summon Cthulhu to wipe out your force. It's like hold on, wait. How can you summon Cthulhu? It's like that was horror clicks. We know. We told you hero clicks and horror clicks were cross branded, didn't we? <laughs> then the price of Cthulhu goes up on eBay. Oh yes. Oh man. So okay. Overall, you can you can see that I've pretty much just crapped on these two resources, and I I don't like where they're going. Um, could they be useful? Yes. Could they be used? Definitely Pandora's box if played properly. Could be used to say, hey. I have these two figures, these three figures. Um, they are going to have running shot prop. They're going to have, you know, a running shot or prop, and it benefits me. They're going to have charge or flurry, and it's going to benefit me. They're going to have, you know, poison or an empower, and it's going to benefit me. But at the same time, I could say I'm better off with the power battery, uh, or even more so with the power plant, because. Per turn, I can decide what powers I need, who gets it, and how they're going to use it. And if I want to sit back and be passive, I can load up a character and make them pretty boss in three turns. And and just burn a ring, plus one stats, I have four different powers, and I have the ability to destroy your resource if I hit in, in this certain range. Oh, boof, I hit. Your resource is destroyed. Thank you. You are completely hosed now. Uh, also, here's my other concern with Pandora's box. Four points per uh, resource. That's really high. That is really, really, really high. That puts you at 21 points. And then 21 on top of 12 puts you at 33 points. That's high. And you might say, well, hey, Dark Logos, that's just the cost of a DEO, I mean, a DEO agent, of um, Star Labs Tech. Yeah, Star Labs Tech that can immediately give me TK or give a friendly character Precision Strike. Which would you rather have, Timmy? And access to a more boss resource. 
All right, so um, that's it for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, I need to get my stuff ready to go out play testing. Robo testing. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that's a it's a Chris Rock joke. Uh, I, I I never mind. I I can't I can't reference that. I have kids that listen, so I can't I'm like go. I'm gonna go listen to Chris Rock. I'm like kids, don't go listen to Chris Rock. If you're under sixteen, don't go listen to Chris Rock, please. Uh, anyway, so uh, that's today's show. You can follow me on Twitter uh, at StartoverPod. It came from outer space and told me, man, righteousness pays off because sin is weak. <laughs> you can uh, find my random musings, my thoughts and whatnot, uh, and uh, all the other good jazz. Find when a new show is up. Uh, you can subscribe to me. That helps me out. Boost my rankings uh, on the YouTubes. Uh, yeah, definitely helps me boost my rankings on the YouTubes. Uh, also, watch the show multiple times. Boost my ranking on the YouTubes. <laughs> All right. Uh, you can uh, email me at startingoverpodcast at gmail.com. That's startingoverpodcast at gmail.com if you wish to opine. Keep it piffy. Keep it awesome, baby. Uh, tell me what you think about these two resources. Tell me what you think about the cost of these sins. Because starting off, they have been really cheap. Like, really cheap. So, what's your thoughts? Or Is everyone chasing the white rabbit? Or is it just like, hey, um, no one's real interested in them. Uh, yeah, so, there's that. If you want to hire me for my services, uh, you know, Hit me up at startingoverpodcast at gmail.com and let me know if you, you want to use my services and I will work with you on any meta element that you want and I will help you um, become the best hero clicks player that you can be in that hours period. It's uh, $15 an hour and it is rather reasonable for personable coaching. Also, I need some money to pay for my hero clicks crack. All right, and uh, last but not least, you can go to the blog, startingoverpodcast.blogspot.com. I'm sorry, I didn't have the buy, up, buy list up last week. The buy list is up now. I got caught up in stuff. And uh, so definitely uh, check that out. You can donate to the show from the blog. Whew! All right, that's it for this week's episode. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for listening. Um, and if you're going against the Tulsa Rock, let me know. And, uh, you know, have a good old time. All right, that's it for today's episode. Thank you for listening. And remember, we all have to play test sometime.